This video describes three individuals who, in all likelihood, have committed much more heinous and terrible sins than you or me. Yet, we know that these three individuals are also going to heaven. We know that because of what the Bible says about them. Namely, they repented and returned to Jesus. They sought mercy and forgiveness. Hi, I'm Christopher. This channel asks questions and provides recommendations to help Christians apply the Bible to our lives and to know God more deeply. The incredible news of the gospel is that anyone who comes to Jesus with their sin will be saved. Sins have no ability to keep us from eternal salvation. It doesn't matter what sins have been committed in the past or what sins will be committed in the future. As long as you bring them to Jesus, you will go to heaven. And that's because we have a Savior who has already paid for our sins. We cannot out-sin the price he has already paid. His sacrifice was and is more than enough to pay for all our prior and future sins. And this is fundamentally different than most other religions in the world, which say that people have to work their way to get into heaven. They generally say that if the number of good things you do outweighs the number of bad things you do, that then you get to go to heaven. And that's a scary way to live, especially if you can't see the scale. I'm glad as Christians we don't have to live in fear and worry about whether the good we do outweighs the bad. To emphasize the point that our salvation is not dependent on the severity of our sins, here are three individuals that have most likely sinned way more than you or me. Do you want to guess who they are? I'll give you a clue. One is from the Old Testament and two are from the New Testament. Come on, I bet you can guess a couple or maybe even all of them. The first is from the Old Testament, and he committed two terrible sins, adultery and murder. This is, of course, King David, who slept with Bathsheba and then murdered Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. We read about this in 2 Samuel 12, verses 9 and 10. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Yet David repented from this sin and sought mercy and grace from God. Sure, David didn't know Jesus' name yet, but he was definitely looking for a savior. We see this in Psalm 51, which David wrote and says in verse 4, Against you, you only, have I sinned. Meanwhile, verse 7 says, Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. And despite these terrible sins, we see David referred to as the apple of God's eye. We see this in Psalm 17, verse 8 in which David also wrote, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. The second man committed arguably an even worse sin against God. The apostle Peter spent three years alongside and working with Jesus. And then in one night, Peter betrays Jesus, says he doesn't even know him three times. What a knife in the back. We read about this in Matthew 26, verses 73 through 75. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately the rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Yet despite that terrible sin, Peter still recognizes that he has salvation, which we see in 1 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Here Peter says we have new birth to eternal life 
through Jesus' work. Peter doesn't say, you had that. He says, us. Peter includes himself in the new and eternal life. The third person I want to highlight didn't just disown Jesus. He actively persecuted him. He worked to eliminate Christianity and stamp out the message of Jesus. This is, of course, the Apostle Paul, first named Saul. We read about this in Acts chapters 8 and 9. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. He, Saul, fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. The Apostle Paul acknowledged his sin, repented, and looked to Jesus for eternal salvation. We see this in 1 Timothy 1, verses 15 and 16. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. And one of the places we see Paul confident in his eternal salvation is Philippians 1, verses 21 to 23. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. So here we actually see Paul is looking forward to death because it brings him and gives him what he wants, to be with Jesus. He's looking forward to death so that he can spend eternity with his Savior. Three men, three terrible sinners, a murderer and adulterer, a traitor, and an enemy of Christianity. Yet the Bible shows us that each of them go to heaven. There is something that each of these men did that we should also do, no matter how small or big our sin, and that is repent. Ask God for forgiveness and look to Jesus' work on the cross, which is sufficient to cleanse from any sin. These three individuals help show that no matter what sin you commit, if you come to Jesus and repent and look to his work for forgiveness, you will be saved. John 6.37 says, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast away. So let's take heart. Our sin doesn't need to keep us from eternal salvation. Let's look to and rest on Jesus. Here are a couple things I'm working on. First, I've been a Christian a long time and I often don't fully appreciate that sin doesn't keep us from heaven. It was actually really helpful to make this video to focus on and consider this gift. It helps me to love God more considering how valuable this gift really is. Second, I do a really bad job of confessing my sin. So I want to do better at the end of each day, evaluating where I messed up and confessing and repenting of my sin. Then I want to rejoice that my sin is taken away. Before finishing this video, I do want to go on record and say that even though Jesus takes away our sin, that doesn't give us a license to sin. Sin is still terrible. God still hates sin, and we should hate sin. So we should attempt not to sin, but also recognize and rejoice that our sin doesn't keep us from eternal salvation. Well, I hope this video has been helpful by using three terrible sinners who we know are going to heaven as examples that our sin need not keep us from eternal salvation if we repent and turn towards Jesus. If you have any prayer requests, please leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to pray for you.